Okay, we're looking here at the second set of problems out of chapter six. These are from the later sections. If you have not watched the Tegrity video on chapter six, um, the lecture portion, or done the practice problems for the first few sections, you'll want to stop here and go back and take care of that before you start this. All right, so if we're continuing on, uh, let's start with number 47, which says balance the following reactions. And we want to identify how much of each type of element we have. So I've got sodium, and I have one on the reactant side, and two hydrogens, and one oxygen. And on the product side, I have one sodium and two hydrogens and one oxygen. Except, <laughs> I think there's a typo in here. So let's pause for a moment and erase. Because I'm pretty sure there should be this. So let's balance it that way. So probably that's what your textbook says. All right, so still have one sodium, uh, but now we have three hydrogens and one oxygen. So we have two hydrogens on one side, but three on the other. And so the question becomes, how do we make that work out? So um, we're going to need more hydrogen. So I'm just going to start by putting a two in front of this and see where that takes me. So that gives me four hydrogens. And now it gives me two oxygens, because this coefficient applies to here, and it applies over to the oxygen. So now I've got two oxygens on the reactant side, but only one on the product side. So I'm going to change the coefficient of the sodium hydroxide, which will change my oxygens to two. It will also affect my sodium. We'll change that to two. And it will affect my hydrogens, because now I have two hydrogens plus these two hydrogens gives me four hydrogens. And so the last thing I have to do is deal with the fact my sodiums are different, and go back over here and put it to. Okay, the second one here, I have one sodium, one zinc, and I'm going to balance sulfates because I see that I have a sulfate on the reactant side and a sulfate on the product side. So I have one SO4, I have two over here. And on the product side, I have two sodiums and one zinc, excuse me, one zinc and one sulfate. So sodiums are not happy. Um, and it looks like this is actually an easy one. I just need to put a two in front of the sodium. And everybody else is balanced. All right, balance the following reactions. This is a little bit more difficult. I've got more elements to think about here. So I've got one sulfur, two oxygens, two chlorines, one hydrogen, and one iodine. And over here, I have one sulfur, one oxygen, one chlorine, um, two, four, five hydrogens, and two iodines. Well, my hydrogens are kind of all over the place, so I'm not going to start with them. I'm actually going to focus in on my oxygen and see if I can adjust that and if that takes care of my hydrogen sort of along the way. We'll see if there's an easy fix there. So I see I have two oxygens on the reactant side. I'm going to make two oxygens on the product side by putting a coefficient of two out front there, which changes my oxygens to do. And now it changes my hydrogens. Now I have um, two plus four is six plus one is seven. I have seven hydrogens. This is going to be messy. <laughs> you know why it's going to be messy? I'll, t I'll show you here in just a sec. Okay, so if I have seven hydrogens on that side, uh, I still haven't dealt with my chlorines. Let's do that, though. Maybe this won't be as messy as I'm thinking. There's my two to cause me to have two chlorines. So that takes care of that. And now my hydrogens have changed again. So I have two plus the four from water, plus now two from HCl. Ah, this is looking like a better picture. Um, so two, four, six, eight, eight hydrogens now. I was a little concerned that hydrogen was going to be an odd number and we'd have to cope with that, but it's even. So looks like my plan um, worked out here. So I have eight hydrogens 
And the only place I have hydrogens on the reactant side is here in HI. So I'm going to put a coefficient of 8 out there. That balances my hydrogens and it change, changes my iodines to 8. Now luckily, iodine is all by itself out here at the end, and so I just have to put a coefficient of 4 to change this to an 8. So now I'm just going to make sure sulfurs, they're good, oxygens are good, chlorines are good, hydrogens and, are, are, and iodines are good. So I'm balanced. In the next reaction, I have two sodiums. I see that I have carbonates and nitrates on both sides of the chemical reaction, so I'm going to balance those polyatomic ions as a unit because they remain unchanged. So I have one carbonate over here, I have one magnesium, and I have two nitrates. On the product side, I have one sodium, I have one carbonate, I have one magnesium, and I have one nitrate. So, looks like what I need to do is put a 2 in front of here. And that will change my sodium to a 2 and my nitrate to a 2. And everybody's balanced. Alright, 61. Using each of the following chemical equations, calculate the number of moles of CO uh, that can be obtained from 2.00 moles of the first reactant. That should actually be CO2. There's a typo. So I need to um, figure out what I'm given here. So it says two moles of the first reactant. So my first reactant here is HCl. So that means I've been given two moles of HCl. And I want to figure out the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is over here. HCl is right here. And I see that the coefficient of HCl is 2, and the coefficient of carbon dioxide is 1. And so that tells me that there are 2 moles of HCl for every 1 mole of carbon dioxide. And that is going to be an important conversion factor for me, because that's what I want to do. So let's go back to red. So I have 2 moles of HCl. and uh, there are two moles of HCl for every one mole of CO2. So I produce one mole of CO2. It's kind of what the reaction already told us. In the next one, I have a relationship of one mole to one mole. So that is actually even easier. Because if I start with 2 moles of Fe3O4, if I have 1 mole of Fe3O4 to 1 mole of CO2, guess what? They're equal. 2 moles CO2. Okay. How many grams of the first reactant in each of the following would be needed to produce 20.0 grams of N2 gas. So 20.0 grams of N2 is where I'm starting. I see N2 is located right there. And I want to know how many grams of the first reactant. And I see from the coefficients that I have 2 moles of N2 for every 4 moles of NH3. So now it's just a matter of getting my grams of nitrogen into moles of nitrogen, because I know this conversion factor I'm going to need to use. So I use the molar mass from the periodic table. There's 28.02, excuse me, grams of N2 for every one mole of N2. That takes me into moles. So now two moles of N2 equal four moles of NH3. Now I'm into NH3, which is great. The question asked me for grams of the first reactant. So my next step is to make sure that I go from moles of NH3 to grams of NH3. And the molar mass is what I need there from the periodic table, and it's 17.04 grams of NH3.
times 3. Put it into your calculator. 20 divided by 28.02 times 4 divided by 2 times 17.04. I get 24.3 grams of NH3. Okay, let's go on to letter D. How many grams of the first reactant? What I need for 20.0 grams of N2. So again, 20.0 grams of N2. Always going to the molar mass here because I've got grams and I need to go to moles. And then I want to go from N2 to NH3. And I see that the mole ratio is one mole of N2 to two moles <coughs> of NH3. And then finally to grams, one mole NH3. <coughs> oh, we have the same thing, 17.04 grams of NH3. 20 divided by 28.02 times 2 times 17.04 gives me 24.3 again. Hmm, kind of makes sense when you think about it. All right. <coughs> Tungsten metal, which is used to make incandescent bulb filaments, is produced by the reaction below. How many grams of H? Ooh, that should be H2. Are needed to produce one gram of tungsten. H2. So, we want to know how many grams of H2, and we're starting with one gram of W. So 1.00 grams of tungsten. Anytime I'm in grams, I'm probably going to want to go to moles. So 183.85 grams of tungsten per one mole of tungsten. And I want to go from tungsten, which is right here, to H2, which has a coefficient of 3. So that tells me, whoa, whoops. Oh boy, go backwards. There we go. That tells me that uh, I have one mole of W, because this coefficient is one, to three moles of H2, because this coefficient is three. And then finally, I need to go to grams using the molar mass of H2. So one mole of H2 is 2.02 grams H2. So, 1 divided by 183.85 times 3 times 2.02 gives me 0 0.03296, and I have three sig figs, so it's going to be 0 0.0330 grams H2. Using the reaction below, how many grams of HCl will be produced at the same time 25.0 grams of KHSO4 is produced? So we see how many grams of HCl, and we're given 25.0 grams of KHSO4. So I have here some information, and I want to go to here. So 25.0 grams KHSO4. I'm going to need the molar mass of that. It's a biggie. 16 times 4 plus 32.07 plus 1.01 plus 39.10. 136.18 grams KHSO4. One mole. KHSO4. And then I can uh, use my coefficients to go from KHSO4 to HCl. So 2 moles KHSO4 to 8 moles HCl. 
And then lastly, I want to go to grams of HCl, because that's what the problem asked me. So one mole HCl. And that's going to be 36.46 grams from the periodic table. So 25 divided by 136.18 times 8 divided by 2 times 36.46. We get 26.77, which is going to be 26.8 grams of HCl. All right, last one. How many grams of aluminum are needed to react with 55.0 grams of sulfur in the synthesis of Al2S3? Now, your textbook kind of leaps ahead here a little bit because it doesn't really talk about synthesis reactions until chapter nine. But if you had this sort of a question, you would recognize, hmm, synthesis, I'm combining things. So we have aluminum, we're reacting it with sulfur, and we're going to make Al2S3. That's all a synthesis reaction is. So then I go back and balance, and I see I need two aluminums and three sulfurs. And the question, it wants to know how many grams of aluminum are needed to react with 55 grams of sulfur. Oh, so it kind of just tells you what the reaction is right there. Okay, so 55.0 grams of sulfur is what I have, what I've been given. And I need to get out of grams into moles, so 32.06 grams of sulfur from the periodic table, one mole of sulfur. And then three moles of sulfur to two moles of aluminum, right from the coefficients of the balanced chemical reaction. These guys right here, doop and doop. And then finally, I want to end with grams of aluminum. So one mole of aluminum, and I go to the periodic table and see 26.98 grams of aluminum. So put it all in your calculator, 55 divided by 32.06 times 2 divided by 3 times 26.98. I get 30.856, and I only have three sig figs, so that's going to be 30.9 grams. Yeah. All right, we're finished.